Hello and welcome to another episode, another an episode of Replacement Radio. I'm your host, Wesley. I'm Andrew. And I'm Ant. And we're here because they're not. They <laughs> are too lazy to do their own podcasting. I know, right? Well, we're taking after them and that we've been talking about this for literal years and have finally gotten around to it right before the deadline. No, I've never <laughs> talked about this. Well, he texted me like four days ago and was like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? I was like, not, uh, no, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All bailed. That's the problem. Oh, I was the last invite. That's why. That yeah. makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Paul, Wes, and I have been talking about this for literal years. Yeah. And here two of us are. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm his neighbor and he still didn't invite me over to do this. Got it. <laughs> it's love. Anyway, hi, everybody. Yeah. How's everybody doing? What have we, what have we been playing? I thought they do other stuff. Do they do other stuff? Yeah. I haven't listened to this show in years. It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, I think they have they have started doing the, like, what have we played recently and then get into banter. Oh, so that they really? talk about board games at the start of the board gaming podcast. And Adrian always has to say, no, 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 we've, we've bantered huh. enough for the, like, pre-banter banter. <laughs> now we need to, uh, now we need to talk about board games on this, a board gaming podcast. Ostensibly. Yes. When, when is the last time you've listened to this podcast? I still listen to it regularly. I may I, be a fool, but I still listen to it regularly. I mean, I just learned that it was still a podcast when he texted me, do you want to be on it? So, <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I don't know last time I listened. At least two years ago? Mm. Back when we were still doing Dungeon Delvers. Mm -hmm. I think the last time that I listened... Oh, actually, there has been some random times, because I'll open Twitch and see that, like, my high game guy's streaming, and I oh, popped in. So, there, yeah. technically, there has been times, but every time I've connected, they've been still on banter. That's so I assume true. that the banter is still the same situation. Um, and then I asked him to talk about Zombie Side, and then I could see in his face like the pain that he's like, oh my God, I'm going <laughs> to talk about this again. Or not Zombie Side, uh, Seven Days to Die. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he's been talking about that quite a bit. On the show? Yeah. Well, not the one time that I listened in. Oh. Okay. Or at least not during the time I listened in. Yeah, that, but, that does remind me I've lied. I listened on Twitch every once in a while whenever I happen to catch them. Normally I play Arkham LCG on Monday nights, though, so I don't hear them. Mm -hmm. It's mostly that it's just like a shiny notification on the left side. You're like, oh, what is this? Oh, that's right. They still do that thing. Uh, the last time I actually probably counted as listening to an episode is the one that I was on where we played something. I don't even remember what we played, uh, but my friend Mr. Pickles joined and or, uh, watched on Twitch and he threw a bunch of money at us and Adrian got happy, so it worked out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pickles. Well, one segment they probably haven't done in a while is what are you drinking? Oh, yeah, mm, so we should definitely let's do that. Run do they not the do that anymore? I mean, I don't oh, know. Oh, my God. What's the point? Those are the three things I needed. What are you drinking? <laughs> bloody Minute. And then whatever else. Did, that you, did you bring about. a Bloody Minute? No, I haven't played Blood Bowl since the last time I listened to this shit. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, I am drinking some of Adrian's Laws whiskey in uh, uh, Cognac Barrel Laws whiskey. Uh, and it's my first time having it, and it's delicious. Uh, I'm not a beer drinker, which is fairly heretical in this group, but uh, but they still provide me with good stuff, so I'm happy. Actually, I'm pretty much not a beer drinker anymore. After so many years of being in just beer, like I'm, I'm just done. But I do drink a lot of whiskey. But today, since uh, this is a special occasion, we did bring some old bottles. So I try to look in my cellar for anything from 2016 when the episode started. But I couldn't do anything from that year without breaking up a set. But I did find a 2015 Old Ruffian from Great Divide. So it's a barley wine. It's what we're currently drinking. It's but we good. have more to come. Yeah. Speaking of the beginning of this show, though, the 26, July of 2016, they started this show. And everything has gone downhill since then. Yeah. Every I, year has I, been I, worse than the last. I can only blame them for Trump. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. That was... Oh. Man, I really feel like this was older than that because I right? I remember talking about it the first time I went to Gen Con with them, which was literally just I was talking to people at game night and I was like, D -d -d I'm kind of thinking about going to Gen Con and Adrian's like, yeah, 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 I'll go. And then we we're just kind of sitting there and then they're like, oh, this is Jeff. Meet Jeff. He'll go too. And he's like, yeah, I've never met you before. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's Jeff's spirit right there. Yeah. But he's always went to Gen Con, so that was an easy win for him. But right. Yeah. He, he would have been there whether or not you guys went. I mean, I don't know what year that was, but I know it was in 2016, and I felt like they started the podcast right after that, so maybe I'm just blurring everything together, but... I mean, it fits with my timeline of, like, I started uh, hanging out with the Game Night folks in 2013, I think, and it was a couple years after that, so... Yeah. Memories, man, are weird. 
I mean, that was basically the year before 2020, right? Everything, yeah. everything around there is all just. Oh, conference. yeah, it was all one long year. Everything since 2020, 2019. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Like, time doesn't have any meaning. As well anymore. as 1999. Yeah. That, yeah. that was just last year. Yeah. Pretty sure. I am hyped, though. Uh, Alamo is doing next year or this year um, their callback where they bring up all the movies they're doing this year, 1999, and they're going to do all the great movies from 1999. Nice. So I'm excited. Why 1999, though? I don't know. That's the year they chose this year. Oh, okay. So they just pick a year randomly. Yeah. It's been 25 years. That's a nice round number. So, yeah, so they're opening the vault or whatever. So a big thing about me and, uh, like, the fact that I'm not drinking starting tomorrow instead of, like, the month of January is that we used to do, or at least I used to do, like, a lot of, like, I don't really care about New Year's Eve, but New Year's Day was mm-hmm. like a lot of drinking and eating. And then we would try to watch movies based that were supposed to be based on that year. So oh, like that like came out yeah, and we're like, like, oh, well, in, in the, the year, in whatever. the future, yeah. future year 2024. And then we would watch stuff like that. So that's that was a big part of me not drinking or continuing to drink on New Year's Day. But then again, I don't know, whatever. It's arbitrary anyway. So yeah, yeah. might as well keep it arbitrary. Are there any good ones for this year? I tried to look it up, and it was kind of hard because the lists are kind of skewed because they kind of have the, a lot of these weird Marvel ones that are oh. kind of mixed, where it's I don't even think that they're really based in 2024, which doesn't even make sense. But I think it's because in the list that I looked up for today, um, it had stuff about like sequels that were coming out in 2024. I'm like, oh, this is this is a useless list. So right, yeah. we didn't we didn't start our movie adventure for today yet. So all right, well that's probably enough pre banter banter. Yeah, Let's talk games. You know what game I've been playing a lot of? Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, from the 1980s. Uh, oh, the old one with the janky ass cards with the flip. With, yeah, with the uh, with the little catapult that you have nice. to launch a dice. Mm. Uh, die yeah. Oh, with. yeah, the, the seesaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I saw you guys playing that last year at Kevin uh, Con, yeah. and didn't get a chance to try it out. Well, I'm sorry to say that there will not be any more chances to play it. Uh, Uh-oh. I was uh, my brother and his whole family were in town and uh, trying to find games that I own that are good for a nine-year-old, and that was one I hit on. And my nephew loved it. It nice. was his favorite thing. And so because, you know, we've got a new kid and my wife and I have not uh, not been great on Christmas shopping this year, we're like, well, guess what? This is your Christmas present. And, uh, and so it is gone. Uh, but he loved it, and we played it about four times, I think. Uh, nice. And oh, yeah. I thought you said that, and you meant you gave it to your kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure he'll get a lot more play out of it and fun out of it than I would. Right. I'd exactly. play it once and be like, okay, cool. Yeah, that was the thing we played. That was kind of my feeling yeah, of like, exactly. yeah, we, we can, sure, we can keep playing this because you love this so much, but my God, this is a terrible board game. The dice uh, never had to land in the seesaw, right? Just yeah, locked. no, they did. Okay, so you uh, go from one side to the other side, right? Yeah, uh, there are four yeah. uh, four holes in it, uh, or like four compartments in the seesaw, and the die always starts in one, and in order to defeat a level one uh, villain, you had to like get the die in the next ah. guy over. In order to defeat a level three villain, you had to uh, get it into the last one of those of the other three compartments um the farthest one away and uh you had two chances with each uh with each attack to like get it into the one you needed it to go into and the actual number didn't matter right no 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 (laughs) yeah uh you did you did roll the die for like how many spaces you moved Mm. um i did the one good thing about this was it wasn't like a single track you could move in any direction from where you were which did give you some like okay i rolled a five i can get to you know, attack over here or draw a card over there or, you know, something else, you know, it gave you some options. Um, but yeah, it, uh, um, the final battle, you had four chances to get the die into the level one, the level two and level three, uh, in each of those, which was surprisingly difficult, especially after I'd had a couple drinks. So my nephew, my (laughs) nine year old nephew wound up being better at that, which is one of the reasons he liked it. So yeah, it was good. It's amazing how winning at a game the first time you play it immediately engenders you to want to play that again. You're like, I do yeah. like this game. I, yeah. d- I did well at it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I played, what was it, Age of Steam this week, mm-hmm. last week, um, which is one that I was like, I don't know that I would really like that game. Um, 
but it was the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I'm like, all right, I'm not doing anything else. I'll go play that. Um, Adrian and me and Megan and uh, Eric Legal played that. Heavy economic train game? Not with Eric Legal. Yeah, <laughs> right. With, well, so not terribly heavy economic. Um, okay. it's, I've only played it once, and it was a few years ago. Yeah, so. It's, so it's more like a mix between a cube rails than, and a pickup and deliver than it is like an 18xx and a pickup okay. and deliver. It's very um, st- streamlined. And as opposed to in like an 18xx or uh, even in a cube rails where you're buying shares in train companies and you're moving your trains around, this one you own the tracks and not the, well, you have a company, but your company only owns your tracks. Okay. And so it's about connecting cities to each other that have or need different colors of goods so that you can ship them, but on only on your rails. Right. Okay. Um, That was a lot of fun. I actually did like it a lot. Maybe because I won, right? But it was and it was good. Technically, ruffle stomped. Oh yes, uh, yes. Adrian. Technically, ruffle stomped Adrian. Uh, final scores in that game. Uh, I was at fifty eight. Megan at forty six. Legal at thirty eight. And Adrian at a gentleman six. Hey, it was not negative six. It was not, and that and you can go negative in this game actually, um, which we thought he was going to do before we reread the rules. On like the second or third turn, we thought he was bankrupt until we reread the rules and realized you don't go bankrupt until your income is negative but mm-hmm. you start losing income so you start at a income of five or whatever and then mm-hmm. if you would go bankrupt instead your income goes down and then you don't actually lose the game and are eliminated until your income is negative okay um but i made the smart uh observation that several cities on the very far side of the board right in front of adrian he didn't spot it um were both yellow cities and both had in the um the pipeline of what goods would spawn there, yellow goods. So it's like these two cities are going to spawn <laughs> yellow and they can't take them, so they have to ship them to yellow. And if I build my trains right, they're four or five connections apart, and that's just points. Yeah. And by the end of the game, I was getting 10 points every turn because I planned ahead, unlike <laughs> literally everybody else. Do you get more more games or this just the one? I got more games. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm as you were talking, I'm like, oh, shit, I actually did play a lot of games recently. So I'm like, you should keep, you should keep going. You should keep going. Okay. Right. Um... The other games that I've been beating Adrian at are uh, Ticket to Ride Legacy. Mm. I'm sure they already talked about that, but... Uh, yeah, Wes and I are in a game with Adrian and Zach and uh, and our friend Danny. Yeah, I think I'm winning that game right now. It's hard yeah. It's hard to say because it's Legacy, right? But right. we're six games in. I think you're... How many is it supposed to be? 12. 12. Okay, right. halfway yeah. through. And there's like obviously in-game points that you don't know if right. people have scored or not. But based on just the available knowledge of points, I think I was in the lead. Yeah, I think I was... The total points, we at the end of the last session, we totaled up all of the points from the six games we'd played so far. And it was like 180-some for you and 170, like, high. I think. Oh, no, because I, th- I thought I was at, like, 300. Oh, maybe. Okay. Well, I, I remember not being very far behind you, like, five or ten yeah, points behind you. I think I was at, like, then... 195 or 295, and yeah. you were at, like, 280-something so, and sure. something like that. Anyway, uh, I think you and I are uh, fairly close at the top, and Adrian's solidly in the third place. And, and then, then Zach, Zach and Danny have not been doing well. No. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying that too. We have uh, created a monstrosity of a U.S. map. Uh, I, I I made that mistake, and by mistake, I mean decision. Yes. I knew I knew what was going to happen, and I almost didn't do it. But I was like, it's going to be more fun to do this. So as the game progresses, you start basically the first game is just the Eastern Seaboard um, through basically the Mississippi. Uh, St. Louis, can't, yeah, St. Louis, Chicago right. are on the original yeah, board up but, to the the Mississippi River. Yeah. Essentially, you, New Orleans, New Orleans, yeah. Um, and then every game after that, every second game after, no, every every game after that, mm-hmm. you add a new puzzle piece to the board. And I so, don't think you do on the first game. Not after the first one. That's but why then I was after that, are we not saying spoilers anymore? I mean, that's pretty <laughs> straightforward. That's part of the game. We're not telling you what any of the uh, what any like each section adds new mechanics and new. What, what game is Detroit to Columbus? Just straight. That's got to be the best. Columbus route, isn't right? on the map. Yeah, I don't think there is Columbus on the map. Uh, is Detroit? Yes. Oh, Detroit, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and so is what Lewisburg or something like that. There's one yeah. random ass town in the middle of uh of the country that like it's Luberg, Luberg, Luberg. Mm. Um, but L- Louisburg, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I hope it's. I mean, it's not too much spoilers, and I'm sure they've already talked about it. But as you puzzle piece around, we kind of did the southern U.S. and then instead mm-hmm. of filling in in the middle, like I, where Denver is, where Denver is, and everything, I just decided, well, we're gonna go straight from 
you know, Me- Mexico and Texas yeah. to California. So all the routes now go, have to go through one city through LA, essentially, I think. So this next game is going to be an interesting one. Yeah. With all those routes from California having to detour through Mexico and Texas. <laughs> And we still haven't put Florida on the map. Uh, Florida doesn't exist. No. I've never heard of it. I hate Florida. I, I mean, let's you switch to Panther real quick and yeah, come yeah. back. But every time I drive around Denver and there's a really bad driver, Florida license plate. Every time. I'm As yeah. much as we hate on Texas people for coming here, Florida are the worst. Never going back to Florida. I don't want to go there. I'm sorry if you're a listener from Florida. Stop listening to this episode right now. <laughs> don't worry. You've <laughs> stop, only got one Stop listening left. to the podcast yeah. altogether. Yeah. yeah. You're only missing an hour and a half of content. Um... That's kind of it for me. I'm, I've got some new games of Arkham LCG starting up mm-hmm. uh, tonight and tomorrow. I've got some new D&D starting up in a couple of weeks. So I'm getting hyped for... A new, new campaign or a new... New campaign. Ooh. I've spent a lot of my uh, vacation, my time off from work this week, um, building monsters, writing stories. You're DMing uh, it, I think. Yeah, it? I'm yeah. DMing. So I've been getting hyped coming up with new rules and, and new story and stuff. Your same regular crew or uh, different, like, are you switching um, up who's playing? More or less the same, like, local crew. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that I wanted to start a new group was because the group I'm in now, half of us live in Longmont. So we're, like... It's a little bit harder. ...commuting an hour each way uh, every other week. It's like nothing gets done because we can only... Everybody's only ever free, you know, during during the week on a work night. So it's like take take an hour to drive up to Longmont. Or them drive down to here and play for two hours. It's not not a very efficient way to play the game, right? So I'm glad to get D and D all in. about efficiency. Yeah. So and scheduling. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, new schedule will work with lo- more local people who don't have to drive as far. So I've got Adrian and Megan in that, nice. and uh, our friends Allison and Clue and Byron and Becky. Lovely. That sounds wonderful. I actually started playing D and D again recently as well. So our D and D campaign kind of fell apart. Uh, June, July-ish, um, which ironically fell apart because one of our other people uh, bought a house way up north, like where we are. And then I was like, all right, so we're uh, also looking to buy a house and uh, we need to, um, you know, take a little bit of time off and we'll start again when we, uh, when we, after we buy something. And then we ended up buying a house in this neighborhood and he's like a lot closer, but he just straight up ghosted us. <laughs> so, I mean, it's okay. He's recently married. He's a lot younger. It's, it's fine. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, but we... Um, I was like, you know what? It's been like five, six months. You know, I'm going to start looking again. And I looked on Reddit and someone posted like, hey, does anyone North Denver, like 30, 40s dads, like have like a every other week kind of situation? And I was like, I'm in. And we <laughs> uh, we all met up at a brewery. And then uh, he seemed like super excited. And he knew, um, you know, a lot of different stuff. And the only thing that seemed kind of weird is like he didn't really necessarily want to get like tied into D&D specifically. He was open to like more different kinds of uh, RPG um, content. And uh we're like, all right, meeting in two weeks. Uh, you know, I live right down the street. Let's all meet at my place. Cool, good to go. And then he ghosted us. Oh, come on. I'm like, he was like so optimistic, knew everything. And then like straight up, I emailed him. I sent a message on Reddit. Nothing. Wow. Wow. But it worked out okay-ish because now I'm just the DM. But there's been not been a lot of times where Julie and I get to play where we're both players. Mm. So I've been the DM for the last, I don't know, however long we've been playing. And then, uh, so now I'm the DM again. Um, but we just started like right before Thanksgiving and then, you know, it's holidays. So we didn't really play in December. We're starting again next week, but it's something, yeah. something. What's the the main gist of the campaign? Oh, I'm just making it up. I, I, I'm not, most of the times that we played, it's been campaigns that I know that we were going to kind of do something short. Um, so, you know, we, we've done like, uh, Lost Minds of Pendelphin. We've done, uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Human and then is so much fun. I like that one a lot. Um, we throw in some re- weird, like stuff, like extra side stuff on that, and um, that was fun. And then we did uh, the last couple years with uh, four of us. We've been doing um, uh, what's the twenty level, twenty something level? Uh, oh, um, uh, Dungeon, Dungeon of the Mad, Mad Mage. Mage. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing that, but that's way more like grindy, like yeah, dungeon crawler. Um, this one, I wasn't exactly sure. I wanted to play a couple random thing, random sessions to like see if we vibed out well because we didn't really get a good session zero type situation. Um, and I didn't know them beforehand. So I wanted to make sure that my style was good for them and their style was good for us. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of like glass of whiskey in the hand making stuff as we go. Right. So, 
you know, sometimes people don't like that. So that one sounds thing, ideal for me. One thing I'm really glad that I did this time was I actually normally I do a session zero, right? Um, but one thing I did this time was put together uh, just like a Google form survey and said, hey, here are generic play styles. Which ones do you like best? Here are generic um, story themes. Which ones do you like best? Here's a list of sensitive topics like, you know, yeah, slavery or sexual assault. Like, which of these are you okay being in the game or not? Like, right. What's going to be triggering? What can we take out? And that has been huge, especially because it's, it's a Google form. It's all anonymous. I mean, I could have set it up that it wasn't, but it is. And then we don't have to all necessarily sit at the table and talk about that. If somebody's shy enough about it and say, hey, that would be triggering for me. I don't want to talk about it. But having it in a Google form was really helpful, I think. That's a great way to handle it, yeah. And then we're doing a real session zero next week. So actually nail down plot stuff. I'm taking the chance of running a seaside kind of ocean campaign, which I've never done before. And so that's one of the things I've been doing a lot this week. Like I said, building monsters and stuff, but just coming up with ways to have lots of interesting at sea and underwater combat and, and encounters and stuff, because those are really rough. Yeah. And how long How long before the first Kraken fight? Uh, Probably a while. I mean, they're, they're only starting at level three, so Kraken's going to eat them up, but I've got some ideas. I do always like like the, the gi giant sea creature comes in and bumps the ship, and you feel like it's going to be a fight, but it's like, I'll come back. I'll come back for you. Yeah. So we, we've got ideas. We've got aboliths. We've got dragon turtles. There's lots of things you can do. And, I mean, you can put islands in the ocean, and you're on land, and that makes it easy, too. We can't put islands in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can, I can make volcanoes happen and put an island in the ocean. What is a dungeon master if not a god? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of times where someone's like, "Oh yeah, um, why why does that happen?" I'm like, "Uh, because that's what well, that's what my brain said. Like, that's this is how yeah. it's gonna work." I'm yeah. sorry. Like, you're in a land of magic. Uh, I thought it would be more here. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I end up doing a lot of hand waving stuff though, but I also am not like you. Way more will, world world building than I am. Oh yeah. Um, for those who are listening that are aware and listened to MHDD, like obviously I'm. Um, Gaming in the same world that I ran that campaign in. I've got my homebrew world that's the same map that I've used for a decade. You know, ran four or five campaigns in it. And it's always just like, all right, throw a dart at the map. We're going to be playing here this time. Yeah. Yeah, mine's mine's definitely way more <laughs> character drawn as you go kind of situation. Improv. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you can still do that. I, I like having uh, the scaffold is what I like to call it. It's you, you've got a system in place on which you can build whatever the players want to be built. But if that scaffold is Greyhawk or Forgotten Realms, I feel it's a lot more rigid and there's less ability to mess around with it. I don't know it as well as if I just come up with something. Yeah, my most of my campaign is along the lines of like, oh, you see a generic bartender and Julie's like, oh, is that her name, generic? I'm like, yeah, her name is Jenny Rick. That's the, that's the story <laughs> now. Love it. Uh, so anyway, for board game stuff, though, I actually, I played a lot, and I didn't realize how much I played in the last couple of weeks, um, but now that you've mentioned Mr. Legal, I'm going to thin this down, too. So I played Chikarion, actually. Oh, yeah, like, I was going to play that, and then I oh, so didn't. I, was you, I, was you, I, yeah, the, you took my oh spot. My God, I, <laughs> they don't listen to this podcast anyway, so fuck those guys. Yeah, right. Um, no, I think actually Eric took my spot on that. Wait, at Strange, though? Oh, at Strange. Or no, at, at, at Ryan's. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. So I was this is going I back a Ryan's. couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I saw him at Strange. I was like, oh, you should have told me. I definitely would have played. Um, and I thought that's what guilted him to inviting me. But I didn't realize that I was also the substitute. So no, but that's okay. Eric was the substitute. Okay, that works out. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know, whatever. So that went pretty well. <laughs> um, what was funny is like he had his friend come over. And then he's I was sitting there. And I don't remember what I was doing. Um but uh, he was like, oh, you need, to, you need to learn the rules. I was like, no, 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 I played. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then my first action I did something. I was like, oh, shit, right, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that one ended up pretty good. Uh, the problem was that there was a couple kitschy things that I forgot. And I've also had some... some there was a couple... I, my main thing was I got crystals, Okay. The problem was my crystal action was basically like spending one crystal gives me nothing. So I ended up not spending a bunch of crystals and I had a whole bunch of extra actions I could be doing because of that, but then managing it pretty poorly. Um, so that was kind of like really bad on my start, but we had a couple uh, fun, um, what are they called? The uh, black magic, the dagger, oh, the, the dark, yeah, the dark, dark alley. alley. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you guys played with dark alley because that <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. really adds a lot of fun. I think you have to. I think yeah, you have it's to. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so we had a couple that were like, if you get money, 
you get double the money. Ooh. And then right after we got that, it's if I got a new trick, I got a second trick. So I was really lagging behind, but I had all these resources banked up and I slung shot and slingshotted, slung, slunged, slang shot, slang, slang shot all the way up. <laughs> uh, it was pretty close. And then uh, I had played a card that was like, oh, if I play this on my trick, then um, everyone else gets minus one and I get plus one. And I played it, but then I forgot to actually do that penalty. And at the end of the game, Eric beat me by two. So instead of him taking the minus two and me getting the plus two and us tying at the end, he beat me by four. Because you missed the penalty. Yeah, but uh, I, was also, I was also really far behind, and the fact that I could slingshot that much was pretty worth it. Um, so I'm pretty good with the second place. I think that was worth yeah. it. Yeah, I think last time I played that, I also ended up pretty far behind and then slingshot it up and took first or second. Like, you can really plan ahead in that game, which f- feels like you shouldn't be able to. Yeah. And then just take boom, 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 12 things, and all of a sudden you're, you're in the front. I think the two biggest things of that game is basically the same thing, which is having that like web app that keeps track of oh, yeah. the cards. Knowing all the cards is huge. And if you know all the cards, then you can plan way better. But having that app um, on there and seeing what resources people are getting and then what cards people get, I think that makes a huge difference. If you don't play with that, then you're really hampering yourself. Oh, yeah. Or you're constantly leaning over to people and being like, oh, let me see what that does. Yeah, yeah. Or even worse, you try to go buy a card and you're like, yeah, I bought that last turn. Pay attention. (laughs) (laughs) Because there's only one of each spell. You haven't played, right? No, I haven't. I was going to ask, this is the magicians learning different spells? Okay. We we call them spells and... They're, they're wizards, but they're, it's, they're tricks. It's yeah, a, they're tricks. It's tricks. That's why it's and, yeah. trick Arian, yeah. not spell Arian. Yeah, you go onto stage and you cast your spells. It's an illusion, Michael. Tricks are something whores do for money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's basically Prestige, the board game, or Illusionist, the board game, because those are twin uh, movies that came out at the exact same time. <laughs> what are year was that? Uh, 2002. Okay. Really? So we got another couple years, maybe, or three years before Elmo pulls them out? I don't know if they do it like that. No, probably not. Now we're looking it up. Oh, man. I can't believe they're that old. 2006. Six. Okay, that makes more sense. But they came out at the same time. So right. I love twin movies. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're very similar and very different and yeah. both very good. Yeah. Uh, my trivia league, my online trivia league, just had a question a couple weeks ago about um, about the Volcano twin movies. Volcano what? and Inferno. Or Dante's Peak. Yeah, Dante's Peak. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, no. Those are, it's it's a fun thing. Like, studios just get scared. Oh, crap, we have this in the pipeline. We need yeah. to get it out before the other studio gets theirs out. And Anyway. It happens uh, all the time. It's weird. Yeah. So then besides that, today, I've actually also, as my new year, which is not a, a, a resolution or anything, but I've spent 85% of my entire day doing board game stuff so far. Nice. So we woke up, and we started playing War of the Ring, because that's nice. what you do. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the first time I ever played, or uh, that I ever got Julie to actually play. Um, I've been kind of trying to convince her for a while, but she's not really one-on-one competitive. Right. Um, because on a one-on-one game, somebody's losing. Uh, and you know, if you're losing in a three-person game, then it's not that bad. Right. But a competitive, you have somebody to competitive asymmetrical with. combat. She was like, ah, that's, and that's like table size game, mm-hmm. and uh. And that's your jam too. Like you like. I love. I love. Yeah. Yeah. More rings. What's the Star Wars Rebellion? Rebellion. Yeah. I love Rebellion. I'm still undefeated in that game. That's because I keep teaching people. (laughs) Let's not play each other. Yeah, I was gonna say, but I don't think we played each other. Um, I would love to learn Lord of the Ring or War of the the Rings. Rings. It's so good. It's a masterpiece. It's great. Um, I love it. Uh, But we uh, we started playing today. She's been saying like, all right, you know, you've been asking this a long time. I'll give it a go. I mean, we, we usually watch the whole extended trilogy for Christmas. Um, so we, uh, we really s- gets you in the spirit. Yeah. All the elves. I mean, I mean it's magical. It's the <laughs> land of magic. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually like yesterday I was like, do you want to, could we play it today? And she's like, yeah. And then we didn't. And I was like, I just wanted to like test the waters. I'm easing you into this. And then we woke up this morning. I was like, okay, let's, let's go. Let's, let's play this. And she looked up YouTube videos and she's like, oh, well there's a 14 minute video or a 28 minute video. And I'm like, I didn't want to watch the 28 minute video, so I watched the 14 minute video. And she's like, I didn't get anything out of that. How long could it actually take you to explain it? And then two hours later, we started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like a game with so many little things where you feel like when you played it a bunch, like it's not. I haven't had to explain it in a while because usually I'll play with like Pat or maybe uh, like Tom or Jeff. 
Um, so they know how to play ish. Um, and then I started explaining it and she kept asking questions. It was totally fair. It's just like, I forgot about all these little things that I have to explain. And when it's two person asymmetrical, like you have to explain all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that took us a while, but we started at noon and we had some, uh, pretty, pretty pivotal movie moments where the ring actually went through Mordor, but she summoned the Balrog. So the Balrog is an expansion piece. Um, and if the ring goes through Mordor, you draw a hunt tile. And if it's the eye, both people die, like the leader of the Fellowship and the Balrog. And it was Gandalf. So I tried oh, to nice. sneak through Mordor. She did no damage, but she, the Balrog killed, and Gandalf died Are you fighting each in other. Moria? In Moria, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Moria. That makes more sense. <clears throat> There's something wrong about the Balrog being in Mordor, but... Yeah, yeah, no, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So uh, we're in Moria, uh, we're in the mines of Moria, and uh, the Balrog suddenly showed up, and right then, uh, Gandalf and the Balrog fought on the, the bridge and uh, fell to their doom, um, immediately to have Gandalf the White show up in Fangor, so... Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then we had, uh, so she is pressing, she went to Minas Tirith right off the bat, um, so she went, uh, she put a bunch of troops on the black gate, but then, uh, came out on minus miracle. Um, so she went straight for, uh, Minas Tirith right as I got to Rivendell and Aragorn, or sorry, Strider at the time. Strider, Strider is still the leader. You don't change until you do an extra action, but, uh, Strider had enough movement to make it to the white tree and turn into Aragorn and claim his throne right as, she took it over and killed everyone in the in the in the city. Whoa! <laughs> and then immediately the fellowship got seen. So he was like seeing the burning tree in the background. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take a hit for the team. And he fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> so now we ended the game because actually I had to come over here. So we're on turn five, and the ring is at minus Morgul. It they're, they're like Frodo and. Uh, Sam are looking at the spider staircase, ready to go in. I need one more sword to go in. And now uh, Isengard is uh, grouped up, and they have a full force, and they are sieging Helm's Deep. So I'm like, this is, this is pr- pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, only, the only difference is uh, I have the Lord's expansion, so you have an alternate version of each hero. And the Gimli version is when they're like, you have my bow and he's like my axe is for dwarves only and he leaves and he mm-hmm. doesn't actually follow the fellowship <laughs> and he's like i trouble is coming i'm going back to Ederer, at er, 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 oh Erebor, yeah and rallying the troops and we are going to hold up in our area so he he went all the way back and uh he's now rallying the troops there at war and the dwarves are mustering while everyone else is just dying um but yeah, so I'm I'm about to get on the track to Mount Doom. She is uh a, once she gets Helm's Deep, she's seven out of ten points in, and we're gonna finish that game as soon as I go back. Exciting. That sounds awesome. Andrew, what else have you been playing? Uh I have once again uh played the first scenario of Sky Team. Uh it's been a game that like because I enjoy it so much, I want everyone around me to learn it and play it and so i've been playing the first scenario a lot i do want to do that um based on just to interrupt here real quick Hmm. i did pick up uh acropolis over Mm. the holidays because every time i'm at game night and you're there and you have it i'm like i want to play this so now now i have my own copy nice nice um i have uh i play on board game arena a lot and i am so close to making expert level at uh at acropolis um which would be my third ever game that i make uh expert level excellent so uh, yeah, that's easily my most played game of the last year, I think. Uh, it, like, both in person and on, uh, oh, yeah. on Board Game Arena. Uh, Are we talking hundreds of plays? On Board Game Arena, probably. Yeah, like over uh, 150, I'd guess. Okay. Uh, plus minus 50. Might be 100, might be 200. I'm not, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Too bad we can never check that, so. Nope. It's nope. impossible to know. Um, but anyway, back to Sky Team. I uh, I taught it to my father, who is... Not much of a board gamer, like, you know, back in the 90s, he and one of his good friends would do, like, the, you know, replay a battle of the Civil War over five months sort of board game, and it would be just be set up in our living room for 
uh, for that entire time. Campaign for North Africa, stuff like that. That that same kind of thing, but right. not nearly as crazy as that. Uh, but yeah, the, there was, I remember one uh, called Bobby Lee that I think was just Gettysburg, you know, huh. Robert Lee, uh, Robert E. Lee. Like just uh, the Battle of Gettysburg. I think it was just, Get- I, I, yeah. it was, they were all Civil War battles. That sure. was all I remember is, uh, and it was just in, uh, individual battles that they would do, but they had like little stacks. Anyway, he's not much of a board gamer, um, but I managed to convince him to play that and I think he liked it, but you know, then the next day my brother and his little kids came and, uh, that was the end of two <laughs> player, <laughs> yeah. uh, thinky games. And so we were into Teenage New- Mutant Ninja Turtles. Exactly. Yeah. We also did play the first three games of Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. Uh, my niece who is 12 is, uh, is super into Harry Potter right now, so. Uh, that was a much more enjoyable experience of, uh, like, this is actually a pretty good game. Even yeah. the first three games are all super simple. Um, Start on game three if you know how to play a board game. Well, yeah. We also, like, in part because we just want it to be all seven years sure. for the cinematic effect of it, you know, we started. And also to teach them what deck building is. Yeah, if you're yeah. teaching somebody, yeah. it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, our starter decks for that game are getting super worn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need some sleeves. Yeah. Uh, Have you played the expansions? Only with you. Uh, oh. We played the potions uh, one a couple years ago at MHCC, and I think that's the only time I've played the expansions. And I think they're I worth it. Yeah. I mean, the game is great. Yeah. I. It's probably a uh, a pointless battle, but I, I don't particularly want to give J.K. Rowling any more money, although... You know, sure. I did wind up buying a new copy of this game for my niece because she liked mm. it so much. So you know, I don't know that that battle may be already lost. Yeah, so. it sounds a little ironic. But yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what I've been playing a lot of games with little kids. Nice. Yeah. Well, I will be starting a new campaign of Arkham LCG uh, later today. We are playing through um, the Forgotten Age. Which, is this online or in person? Uh, online, tabletop simulator. Okay. With my friend Eric, uh, who lives in New York. Um, we started it already, like two months ago or something, and like the first camp, the first scenario, we got completely stomped, and then we're like, all right, let's retool our decks and try it again. And we made it through the first scenario, and then in the second scenario, we got completely stomped. And we're like, we're doing something wrong with our decks. And the problem was... I've been playing uh, Susie, who's the the print and play um, blob character. Yeah, <laughs> she's literally a blob. Yeah, so there's she's like a ditto, like looks like a person. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so there's so they did several years ago. They did the um, massively multiplayer um, scenario, the blob that did everything, and then for April Fools this year or last year, I guess um, they released the blob as a character that you could play. And then, as a joke, I mean, it's not playable. It's a completely unusable, but it was a funny joke. But then at Gen Con, they released The Blob They Did Everything Else, a sequel scenario. And in that, as a print and play option, is Susie, who is like a piece of the blob that broke off and, and gained sentience and decided that it wanted to be a human and starts mimicking human. And that deck is really hard to pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the blob character is impossible to like actually play because of his stupid abilities that he has to like act- actively be eating things all the time mm-hmm. and destroys you know fabric of the universe um and you couldn't actually play it Susie is like that dialed back to like 10 percent of how bad that is but it's still bad enough where you're devouring things off the table that you really shouldn't be devouring and you can get fucked really hard if you get bad rolls um and i just i don't I don't know. I was talking to May about it, and she said that her friend built a Susie deck that was pretty good. And I looked at that deck, and I was like, I don't see anything in here that's massively different from the way that I built it, but I couldn't do it. So I will be playing... Who am I playing? Kamani Jones. Play some uh, blue-yellow action and see if we can... Or green-yellow action. I love playing green characters in that game. I don't know. None of you guys care, but... (laughs) (laughs) Nope. I... Whenever I come on as a guest to fill in for uh, Jeff or Zach or whatever, I will... I'm the only one that gets to talk about Arkham, and they also mm-hmm. sit there and stare at me. Yep. So, Thulu is uh, my least favorite theme, I think, which is a shame because you know the games all look interesting. Oh yeah, except for Pandemic Thulu. But uh, that one, I played that at 
Gen Con and that sucked. Yeah, that I was the it. worst pandemic game by far. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I wish I liked the theme more, but I don't. And so I almost never play any games in that world. Yeah. I, I built a spreadsheet to go through and keep track of all the characters so that every time I start a new campaign, I'd be like, mm-hmm. all right, who have I, have I not played before? And like, what skills like do I want to try to focus on? And I can filter it down. And uh, I've played of all the, I think there's like 55, 60 characters or something. And I've played uh, like 60% of them at least once which I was surprised that it was that many. So that's why I'm playing Kamani Jones with this next one because that is one of the newer characters that I haven't played before. Nice. And Green, the rogues, are uh, one of my favorite classes, and he's like one of the few that I haven't played in Rogue. So we'll find out how that works out right after this. Mm-hmm. Or I'll find out. None of the listeners will. They don't nope. care. They don't know. Fuck them. Yeah. Just come on next time. <laughs> break in I know you guys are recording the last episode but everybody needs to know that my Kamani Jones deck is really great <laughs> uh, well I'm sure the uh, listeners are also extremely interested to learn 168 games of Acropolis on Board Game Arena hey, in you the last that year far off. And, uh, and I've won 100 of them so oh, that's a, that's a good fair yeah two thirds ish yeah do you have any other games not really uh, yeah I mean play a ton on uh board game arena and uh terraforming mars is now an alpha there and so i've played oh, that's right a ton. i need to give it a shot yeah I, I don't play much on board game arena but i should probably i don't know do your that. username but i'd be happy to send you an invite so we can play <laughs> yeah uh, acropolis and get your kill death ratio up a little bit <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i uh i've been uh i've been playing the solo version and the uh and some you know just turn-based turn-based Anything with heavy strategy is not great, but uh, I also don't have time to dedicate to, like, let's just sit down and play a live version of a game. For uh, sure. But you can actually play people against, like, individual specific people you want to play online, which you couldn't do in the app, I don't think, ever. You couldn't, like, challenge. Oh, yeah, I never played on the app. Yeah. So. The, like, Steam purchasable one? Uh, No, like the App Store or, like, Google Play Store or version i don't like you could play against and they this may have changed more recently than i've owned the app since i switched are we talking about acropolis or uh, no 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 uh uh, terraforming mars okay sorry uh i think you could just play the solo mode or against ai i don't think you could play against other humans i mean i have it on steam and it's pretty good on steam it plays really smooth so nice i have not i don't have it there so yeah, continues to be my favorite game. Uh, Wes and I and Zach had a uh, little project in the fall of uh, of playing Terraforming Mars pretty oh, regularly. Yeah. Uh, Trying to pick up all the, um, all the expansions. expansions that we yeah. hadn't tried before. Right. I still haven't played uh, Turmoil because nobody wants to play Turmoil. Yeah, my understanding, after, especially yeah. from Zach, who has played it, is that it's not worth playing. Right. But I've got it. Yeah. Same. Give it a shot sometime. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what that Kickstarter is doing the, for Pro, uh, Prelude 2. I mean, it finished. Well, yeah, so I mean, but, I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't looked at the updates I've, or seen what the shipping schedules are or anything. I'm curious now. Yeah, I can't remember having gotten an email anytime recently. But anyway, uh, yeah. So that, I think, is uh, all the games we've been playing. Do we want to move on to... Oh, no, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. I do have one more. I, I, didn't know, is, I didn't know that we're dipping into other actions. So, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, uh, I thought you would... Made it through your list. What else have you oh, got? My list was large. I was just trying to like thin it to to important things. But um, the other <laughs> game that uh, Julie and I'm playing a lot about is Revive. You guys familiar with Revive? Mm. I've, I've heard of it, but I, I don't saw know Jeff anything about it. Playing it with some folks at the Cabin Con, but and it looked really interesting. We played it the first time at Cabin Con as well. Um, but uh, I remember Jeff and uh, and Boyd being in it. I think. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would have been. Hey, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so last um, board game anniversary, which actually there is another board game anniversary, but we'll save that to later. Um, the last board game anniversary, Tom Photos won a copy of it for free, and he's like, I'd, nice. "I'm not really gonna know who to play this with besides you guys." So we started playing with him, but then he's like, "Okay, so I'm never gonna play it with anyone else besides you guys because I don't know anyone else that would play this game." But it's like a worker placement deck builder. Um, it's been pretty good. And then Julie and I borrowed it and we both liked it. And it plays really well two player. So we've been playing it and we got the expansion recently. So we've been trying that out. And the expansion comes with four new like character styles, character cards, classes, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're all pretty good. One of them really requires a bunch of players to make it work. Um, but overall, it's been pretty good. 
Uh, unfortunately, she's really good at that game, and I don't understand why. And she crushes me. It's like <laughs> it's like really bad. Um, I feel like every time like I have a good strategy, and I just can't get anything rolling, and she just steamrolls me every time. I haven't played with Julie that much, but I, yeah. my impression is that you're she's, a better. She's not a steamroller, really. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. And then we played uh, like Endless Winter after that, which is also another like deck builder game, and she just couldn't get it. But like Revive is kind of tight. And like you can't get mm-hmm. quite stuff. I mean, it's not Agricola tight, um, but you just once someone starts going, the game is going to end quicker. So yeah. like it's 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 um, going to happen much. I mean, Agricola has a set number of turns, and you never get as much done as you want. Right. Endless Winter has too much. It has a whole lot of things to do, but you get to do so many different things, and you get to do them easily that you don't have to do them anymore. Like you complete a lot of those things. And Revive is kind of that middle ground where it is tight, but someone's going to run away with it if they, if you don't like catch, you don't, you don't check them. It's not necessarily like player yeah. versus player aggression, but it's, it, it, it feels, it feels that way. They, they'll, they'll grab the points before you can. Um, yeah, but that's, we've been playing that. The expansion is pretty good and I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's necessary. It just adds more of the same, which I'm definitely down for. So. Nice. Yeah, I just pulled it up on BGG. I have heard you guys talking about this. I don't recognize this game at all. I don't think I've ever seen anybody <laughs> play it. I like the art, the the board. I'm like, I I've heard people say revive, but none yeah, of this it looks was, familiar. It like their first run wasn't really a lot of copies, so it sold out. But then it wasn't also wasn't like super hyped, so it wasn't like they were in a mad rush to reprint or anything. So I I feel like just there's not a lot of copies around about it, but yeah. That's been pretty good. We like Revive. Oh, we're going to play more. And that's the uh, most recent 3D insert that I printed for a game. And it works nice. out great. Nice. Um, for me. So last night, I played um, Betrayal, third edition, the new stuff. Not Legacy. Not Legacy, right. The the new version with the the much better haunts. Um, though we did... It's a very low bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did destroy when the haunt came out. The haunt came out kind of late. Um, and I can imagine this one, I don't remember, it was, there was a demon dog that was like trying to hunt us all down in the house and eat us. And there was food in the larder and we had to get the food, but then if the dog got to the food first, it became more powerful and could eat (laughs) us. So we had to get the food and then exercise all these ghosts, um, in the house. And there were four locations I think that we needed to find and three of them were already on the board. So we, I think one in like two rounds before the dog could even like barely attack one of us. So better haunts, but not yeah. necessarily. It's still it's good. still hit or miss. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> the rules were very clear. There weren't any questions about the rules. That was always the problem with mm. the second edition betrayal is that you would get a haunt and you're like, oh, it says that I can do this with the monsters that I'm controlling, and then you read the rules on how to control monsters, and it's like, well, that's not a thing that monsters can do, but the haunt says I can do it. But then when I attack, it says do X, but the main rules say when you attack, you do Y, and there was always conflicting rules in the old version. It didn't matter if it was the haunt was balanced or not. I mean, that's, I think, kind of the fun of Betrayal is that the haunt is always not necessarily very balanced. Janky? Yeah, yeah it's there are a janky, lot of janky ones. But at least the rules are tighter in 3rd edition. And I and I can imagine that if that had come out earlier and we only had two of those locations available, because we had to basically search the whole deck before we found the fourth one. So, I mean, we probably would have been in a lot more dire straits otherwise. I mean, I, I realize that it would be more complicated, but I feel like that game would benefit from like a grid on the back page that says, if you have this many rooms available and you release this number thing, check this off, this is the scenario. Because there's some scenarios that mm-hmm. are way too easy if you have yeah. few rooms or way too easy if you have a lot of rooms. Like it's, yeah, it's or bonkers like that. Just a, a column that says, hey, set up, this is how you do the setup for this haunt. If you have X number of rooms already revealed, then set it up like this, and it's a little bit more powerful for the trader. Mm-hmm. Like the trader starts with two demon dogs or whatever. Right. Uh, other than that, the only other thing I did last night at New Year's party was Mario Kart. Lots mm-hmm. That's banter. Man, That's banter. Mario Kart. That's a good segue to banter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I love me some Mario Kart, though. There's nothing else to say about that. They had the... Nothing else to say about it in the next... Mm-hmm. Continue talking. <laughs> this <laughs> is still my life. Yeah. Something. They, <laughs> they did have the uh, the new expansion that has like twice as many tracks or or one third as many tracks as before. I don't remember added on, 
Um, and so I <laughs> twice or one third. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> half again or right, yeah, half yeah. again as many or double as many. I can't remember. Uh, there's whatever that is. Fifty percent more or a hundred percent more. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we only play tracks I hadn't played before. Nice. Which was fun. Uh, I did not go well for me as a person who is used to destroying at Mario Kart. Um, but it didn't go badly for me. I won easily fifty percent of the races. That's not well for you. Yes. Um, and I, I like these guys. So these are some friends of mine from college that I don't see except basically uh, New Year's and 4th of July. They always throw a party mm. for those two holidays. And that's the only time that I see these guys because they live way down south in Parker. Um, and Mario Kart is one of the things that we do. And and they're not sick of losing to you yet? Well, no, because they're actually good at it. Mm. Like anytime, the only people in our regular friend group that is good at Mario Kart, uh, Nick and Jurassic and Zach. And I only ever play with them at the grilled cheese party uh, when we're playing drunk Mario Kart. Which is funny because that's the only time I can remember Mario Kart in my like recent years is like watching people at yeah. the grilled cheese. Uh, that's basically the only time I ever play is grilled cheese party, uh, 4th of July, and New Year's. Um, but, so they had all the new tracks this year and I hadn't tried them before. And I was doing pretty good. I'm impressed that I was able to keep up with people who I consider as good as me, if not better. And I won my fair share of races despite having no idea what tracks we were on. So that was a lot of fun. I might pick up those tracks now. Nice. Anthony, do you have anything for banter? Well, let me start off with banter with saying it boggles my mind that Jeff has been doing this podcast for however long <laughs> it is. And he has these terrible headphones. I'm wearing his headset. It's awful. It's awful. Like You chose this. Yeah, I chose his seat. The beer mm -hmm. guy should be in the beer seat. It makes sense. The problem with this is it feels like these are the free headphones you get in an airplane. You're like, why? <laughs> like, I, like the desperation. Like I, it just blows my mind. Like how they're not comfortable even. Like, I mean, Shame. I guess it, he does have poofy hair, so I guess it does sit higher. Mm. But ha not even adjustable. Like, but the poofy hair is also recent. Maybe the poofy hair is a uh, an adaptation to the headphones. Has he cut his hair since he started the podcast? I feel like that's a good yeah. sign of like <laughs> you need to seek some help. Like maybe you're just like you gave up. You gave up after you joined this podcast. Uh, and then also this room is just like I I I feel like it's like a dungeon now. It just it feels dingier. Like let's, let's vacuum up a little bit, guys. My my mm -hmm. nose is so bad right now from dog hair. But I mean, I granted they don't give a shit about dog hair. But right, <laughs> like, I'm, like like everything is like super dusty. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's the start of my banter. That's a, we're setting it on a positive note. The other note is I, I went downstairs and I saw Adrian's video game set up, and I'm like, you guys are just monsters. Like, you, how do you how do you say that you guys play video games all the time and you're like playing on the couch with like your mouse on your lap? <laughs> uh, uh. So besides that, we did switch beers. So oh yeah, yeah, that's important. So, so yeah, I was one? gonna say we just opened up. This is Lost Abbey, uh, Number of the Beast, track number eight which is ale brewed with raisins, aged in bourbon barrels with cinnamon and chilies. Yeah, see the cinnamon and chilies kind of lose me on that. But, you know, it's not like they're strong. It's definitely aged enough to I, balance it out. Yeah, I do remember those flavors being a lot more forward when it was fresh. Oh, yeah. That's why if I ever buy something that has cinnamon chili, just because it's like something that I have to get for like a set size, I make sure to give it some time. Yeah. Mm. Like I used to buy Rumpkin and uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the other pumpkin beer, can, the the pumpkin with a KY on it. Yeah, I used to always buy those two, but I never drank them because I just like they're. Oh yeah, I hated them. I sit on them for like ten years to make it worth it, and then after ten years, yeah, that's fine. But that's because there's no pumpkin, so it defeats the purpose. It's just some weird. <laughs> well, and they're so boozy too. Yeah, it I just mean, it just takes it two three years just to mellow out to where it's drinkable. I mean, I I've really thinned out my beer cellar. I used to have like five six hundred bottles. Um, we're down to like the last hundred or so nice. but they're all like sets yeah mm -hmm. right you want to have a special occasion where you can drink through 10 years of the same thing but i think i think the freshest thing i have down there is 2018 so it's wow. still everything is just like all this stuff is like you can't drink it so <laughs> so did you just completely stop collecting yeah i think so i think i'm done with it <clears throat> i the only thing i really ever buy anymore i used to have a lot more stuff um in this era 2016 2018 kind of range and after about 2020 
the only thing I ever buy anymore is Bourbon County just because it's like a tradition. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it's just tradition. Right. It's not, it's, it's a good beer. It's not great, but it's tradition. Even then, like, I feel like they really went downhill after they yes. tried to change forms. Uh, well, the year after they got bought out, they changed the format. They got a different bottle size and everything. And they like, just like, it's not the same anymore. I haven't enjoyed any of the 12 ounce bottles of them. I'm not saying that they're bad in any way. I just, they're not quite as yeah. unique as they used to be, but maybe but it's I, just. I haven't opened any of the ones that I have that have aged though, since, uh, I mean, all the ones that I had the year they came out were fine. Um, Actually, the Banana Fosters one from this year was pretty good. See, I hate when they do all those extra varietals. Yeah, I usually buy one or two of the regular ones, cellar one and drink one, and then I'll pick one of the weird flavors and drink one and cellar it. So the, the Banana Fosters one from this year was pretty good, uh, but it was very banana. So I'm curious how that one ages out. See, for me, banana is an off flavor in a lot of different kinds of beers, and that's just like something I absolutely do not want to deal that's with. That's fair. Any, any of that, that, that like the... Uh, fake runts taste that's what oh, that's what yeah. they go for, yeah, for yeah. Me. anything you go banana wise on that it's ruined for me and same thing like apple is like so hard for me apple well, is just a really bad characteristic in most beers that people don't catch and the thing about the fake runts banana flavor which is just a fun fact is that those are based off of what bananas used to taste like mm -hmm. i mean that's fair i just don't want it in my beer well because there, there was <laughs> i don't know when this happened you know, huge, 100 years uh, ago or something uh, yeah 75 something like that oh i guess okay not 50 yeah. years ago right somewhere in that range there was a huge like fungal um pandemic through the banana the the major the, the one the major... one major varietal of bananas yeah. and it killed them all off and so anything banana flavor that like that artificial banana flavor is kind of based off of what bananas used to taste like and then after that catastrophe of banana you know infection we picked a different varietal of banana and we're like all right well these are going to be bananas now the other thing about that is that the uh the previous uh banana cultivar the uh cultivar, peels thank you i said yeah. varietal but cultivar is the correct uh the the peels were I mean, much... I said mordor so we're all, we're all wrong somewhere <laughs> <laughs> you amateurs um the the peels were much slip much more slippery than current banana peels which is so where the gag like, oh my gosh of it banana makes so peels. much sense now yeah yeah, yeah. uh ban current banana peels not actually slippery but yeah that's the, like, the like why do they always do that because yeah. back in the 30s when they were making cartoons about slipping on banana peels they were slippery that's exactly. crazy i mean have you ever stepped on a banana peel it's really easy to slip on them oh well, you're right i haven't there are not a lot of banana peels on the ground where you know we, where i, think, I, I think we need to do an experiment i, I don't think we need to i can, <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> Uh, but also I think, isn't that happening again? Like there's a severe threat that there's going to be a huge, I mean, fungal... whenever there is a, uh, single cultivar well, that yeah, is susceptible to yeah. the same, you know, I thought yeah. that there was some, something a more going specific on, thing that there was a more specific threat that they, that banana Entirely cultivators possible. have been trying to fight back for a decade or something. They're like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's going to happen again. I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe, maybe I'm crazy. I hate it when all my bananas get <laughs> pandemic. I mean, when you talk about a lot of different kind of grains, there's always that concern. Yeah. I mean, how many oh, movies yeah. are like, oh, the the wheat grain has been destroyed, devastated by this plague. So you right. know, it's not right. like that's unrealistic to think that they're concerned about that. It's just always feel like it's going to be a concern about any crop that you do. Yeah, any any kind reliable of reliable monoculture is never <laughs> right. great. And yet we've survived this many thousands of yeah, tens of thousands of years. As we Some get more and more interconnected, uh, yeah. the risks get farther and farther between, but they are all more existential, like pandemics. Yeah. So, which to bring it all the way back to my D and D campaign. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I, ho I hope Adrian doesn't listen to this. He's going to listen to it. But there may or may not be a major pandemic happening in the world that oh. they're, that they're going to have to be dealing with. So we'll see how that that functions. Because they're they're like pirates essentially at at sea so they like come back and there's like oh maybe there's a sickness happening it's fine don't worry about it and then they leave for a couple of months and they come back and it's worse mm. so like that's kind of the the main pandemic season zero yeah that's that's kind of what right. i'm thinking for this no that campaign. was two that two? was two for yeah. the islands yeah that god, was spoilers two. god <laughs> you're anyway, the that's kind of pandemic um, starting though so it's 0 0.2 right yeah i guess it was yeah it was before one but after zero right well, he's saying two started with the islands. It started with, but wasn't it the the pandemic from one? Yeah, 
that, you know, oh, so I guess it's one and a half is when that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, but pandemic, the pandemic just started, so now it's now it's right. season zero. Right. Like, point two one. No, no, zero is the like research that went into creating the. Pandemic. But I'm saying the pandemic is. St- they don't know that there's oh, a pandemic okay, yet. Okay, okay. I That's see. Right. Well, if there's like, not spoilers, right now, there's certainly oh spoilers now. We're like, yeah, we're very D and D spoilers, pandemic spoilers, legacy spoilers. Yeah. Ticket to Ride, Legacy spoilers. We don't oh. give a shit. You, what are you going to do? Stop listening to us? I mean, it doesn't matter. We can spoil <laughs> as much as we want. You just stop. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Fuck give them, you, give, listeners. Don't give them the satisfaction of listening to <laughs> the next episode. All three of you. All three of you. <laughs> so it's going to be back. like Boyd, May, and then Adrian's going to listen to about five minutes of this, and that's it. He's not going to listen to this part, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. He's sending it to Zach to edit. He's not going to listen to this. Uh, going back to the banter. Yeah. I did want to say that uh, that there is a fairly new like within the last year and a half or so uh mexican cafe like brunch place uh like four blocks five blocks from where my wife and i live and uh nice and we had started going there pretty regularly on the weekends just walking over with the kid and uh we keep seeing with the kid (laughs) with the kid yeah um she has no say can she walk Mm, she's getting frighteningly close already um Anyway, she's five months old for the listeners. Wow. Um, anyway, the uh, we kept seeing these families order uh, this like giant loaf of concha, Mexican sweetbread, and a giant carafe of uh, of Mexican hot chocolate, and we're like this looks amazing. But also, we're just two adults, and, <laughs> yeah, and carafe of hot chocolate sounds yeah, too much. It is. Uh, it's at least a gallon of Mexican hot chocolate. A gallon? Yes. <laughs> Why is a carafe a gallon all of a sudden? I don't know, but it's. Uh, <laughs> it's heck? like. Um, yeah. Okay. It, it's in a um, a thing that looks like a Gas large container. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, like a half a, liter, we, like Aztec style. Aztec, you know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I guess style is the right word, um, but just coffee mug or or something like that. And it, yeah, it is <laughs> massive. Um, but with both my family and now Rebecca's family coming into town to meet the baby for the first time, um, we've been able to go there and like, now we have a large enough group, we can order this. And it has been delightful. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, that is my banter. Uh, really enjoying some Mexican hot chocolate and sweet bread. I'm gonna talk about some video games. You also you can talk about some video games after I do. I can. Okay. It's, I I haven't been playing a whole lot recently, but I got some stuff I can talk See, about. Yeah, I feel like I I had this lull in like August September where I was like I just don't know what to play, and then I was like you know what fuck I'm gonna bring back some old games, and then we had a couple Steam sales in a row, and I got a whole bunch. Of, now I got too much stuff to play. Yeah, with the Steam sale right now, or the holiday sales that are happening at least, there's a couple of games I need to pick up. So I haven't been playing anything this past week because I've been focusing on D&D stuff, but I, there's a few that I can talk about that I'm excited to pick up and, and start going on. So one of the new games that we grabbed was a uh, Void Crew. Uh, I think Jeff mentioned it. Maybe Thursby mentioned it. Um, and I'm playing. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, Thursby comes back into town, which so means we can play. Nice. Um, but I really feel like that's um, kind of a combination of... Man, I can't even remember what the two games are. Uh, it's a space co-op game, so it kind of feels like a little bit of Deep Rock, but it's more Barrow Trauma. Like, everything goes bad really fast. So uh, I've been enjoying that. Uh, it's a little still early in their release. Um, I think it's beta, but uh, what's beta even mean anymore? Like, we st- right. we've been playing like, Seven Days to Die, and it's, they beta, celebrated beta 10 years like, of alpha. Right. Like, yeah. I don't think that actually should be called alpha. It should be called beta. But Open beta is basically we've released the game, and yeah. I'm, I'm upset that they do that. so many of that. Like, open sure. beta is stupid. Uh, I thought that game was great. Um, it's uh, I'm not really a big fan of the way that the ships travel themselves. I feel like there should be a little more drifting, and like if they had a uh, what's that sci-fi uh, the Amazon show that Jeff loves? The, For all mankind? No, no, no. They're in the spaceships. The expanse. The expanse. Oh yeah, yeah. I, oh man, if that ship had the expanse logic on movement, I think that game would be great. Real physics. Yeah, like there's no physics. Yeah, that's why Expanse is so good. Is they yeah. they are very hard on their physics. It's, yeah, it's, until uh, they aren't. Well, yeah, until they but, aren't. But that's because. Right. Alien, Alien technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. No, I mean, but I, the I first, love, that show first two seasons. <laughs> right. Well, and that's why I was confused when you said Amazon, because Amazon picked it up for the fourth season. It was sci-fi before that. Yeah. I oh. actually have read through the first six books and only just recently watched the first season, and I'm excited. The books to, are so good. Yeah. I, I was... 
I want to read the last three, but I just got put off by the like several decade jump between. Yeah, book it six was and seven. it was a little weird. But um, anyway, but they they have some very interesting things, and it wraps up very nicely. And I think mm-hmm. they did a good job of saying we're gonna do a trilogy of trilogies, and after nine books, we're done. Mm-hmm. And it, it worked out except very well. for the like thirty five short stories well, that they've yeah, released. Yeah, anyway, yeah. we don't talk about that. Yeah. Any other video game stuff? Sorry, I continue. No, yeah. that's fine. The whole this, yeah. it's not planned. It was just whatever. Yeah, we got. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, so the only other thing I've been doing recently, well, I've been doing stuff, but the only thing other thing I wanted to mention is, is I started playing Elden Ring co-op. Co-op. I didn't so know I had co-op. Well, so Elden Ring always had like you can invite someone over and they can oh, participate in right. a general area. Similar but there's a regular. Source, there's a mod yeah. that says you know just fuck it. Like there are no invaders, and the two people can play simultaneously. Throughout the entire game seamlessly. So it's seemed called seamless co op. Okay. Um, and it, it is so fun. I mean, I really love Elden Ring. I probably played through it 12 times now. Um, and mm-hmm. I just got a Mr. Pickles actually just joined me. And uh, Mr. Pickles is does not have the attention span to deal with Elden Ring at any from soft games. Like the, the quest lines are always extremely vague. Like if you don't look stuff up, you're not going to figure out how to get everything. He just wants to smash things. So I want to play again with someone. He just wants to smash things, so I just tell him where to go, and he yeah. follows me, and we just smash stuff, and it's so fun. Yeah. I, it's super great. I'm right, really we're gonna excited go fight this that. boss. Just yeah. follow me, and we'll fight it. Yeah, and then we get there, and we're both like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been great. The only thing I would say is it's a little too easy sometimes, but then again, you can summon someone for a fight anyway, so that was always an option. Sure. It's just like, yeah, I don't know. There's, it's a good mix. I mean, I mean, maybe it's too easy because I know exactly where we should be going at the time, um, and he's generally you know, pretty good at video games. So it's not like he's trying to learn everything as we go. Uh, so it's been really fun and I really have been enjoying it. So if anyone ever wanted to play Elden Ring, uh, Boyd or May, uh, you can <laughs> you can download that and it makes it makes the game fully co-op, which has been really fun. That might be fun. I've, so I have that uh, Elden Ring. I purchased it and I never played it. Um, I Why might- have you never played it though? So I, I just don't play a lot of video games in general. I mean, that's fair. I'm not a big gamer. Then you gamer. maybe should something buy less. <laughs> well, yeah. So I've got Elden Ring hanging around that I'm like, I need to get around to this. So like everybody was posting their um, Steam recaps or whatever mm-hmm. in the Slack. Or oh, the, yeah. The I did not like Discord. that Steam recap. My, my recap was very sad. I played like three games this year. It was Cyberpunk, uh, Aldersgate. Aldersgate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Tabletop Simulator, which is just Arkham LCG. Um, <laughs> So those are like literally the only three games I played this year. So I need, and I didn't even finish Baldur's Gate. I'm still stuck in the final part of Act Two, getting ready to like wrap up at the tower. Um, so I I need to jump back into that. Um, and I've got Elden Ring like in the wings, that's ready so ready to play it. Um, I but, mean, you have to you have to be okay with being frustrated. Oh yeah, that's no, that's thing. great. It's like you have to be frustrated, and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. I know that I will be less good at other FromSoft games that are a bit more punishing. My understanding is that Elden Ring is less punishing it's definitely and more less. story-driven, yeah. which is what I'm more into. Like, for example, if we're just going to go back and say Hollow Knight, one of my favorite games of all time, is often compared to um, Souls-likes, but it's very much more story-driven and not as punishing. Yeah, George R. R. Martin wrote the background story to it, which you don't actually really like. Yeah. It's, it's funny, he didn't write the story of the game. He wrote the background story that the game is based on, Yeah, which is great. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, so that, and that's half of why I wanted to do it. It's like, this seems like it's going to be more story driven and more George R. R. Martin. And I want to just play the story. Um, so I have that on the list and it's ready to go. But what just recently came out that I need to pick up and I'm excited to grab is City Skylines 2. Oh, of course. Mm. I mean, <laughs> oh, they're an architecture game. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, city building is different than sure. architecture, but yeah. Um, I've been watching some streamers play it. I was going to wait until, uh, after Christmas to pick it up and I haven't done it yet, but I've been watching some streamers play it and they have really streamlined a lot of the issues that um, Skylines 1 had and really, in my opinion, picked up on a lot of the city planning kind of concerns that are real mm. real world issues that the other game didn't really engage with and this one has. And it it's a lot more in depth in the way that the systems and simulations interact with each other and the the types of industry that you have feed into the types of commercial that you have feed into the types of jobs you need feed into the type of education that your a population has to have in order so it's a very deep simulation and really follows traffic and parking and how to do good 
city planning. And I'm really excited because City Skylines 1 was great, mm -hmm. but it didn't go as deep into those things. And it was like, yeah, traffic's a problem, but as long as you put traffic circles, you're okay most of the time. And this one seems like it really simulates parking and a lot of the sims have uh, preferences of where they're going to park, how much they're going to pay to park and stuff like that, that it actually like, it's crazy on um, city planning Reddit. They're like looking at it and like, oh my God, it's just like proving everything that we know about how real people plan to go to a dense urban area mm -hmm. because they don't want to have to park. So they won't, or if there's not enough parking, they're going to go somewhere else. And then your city gets screwed up. And there's a lot of, you know, people that play games discovering all of the problems with car centric design <laughs> that are like, oh, the, the problem is that we need to provide better pedestrian infrastructure. And then city planning Reddit is like, yeah, see guys, they're finally learning what we've been no telling them for years. So I'm, I'm excited from that as a, from a professional standpoint. I do have a car centric question for you then based on that. Okay. Uh, in cyberpunk, do you agree that the driving is complete trash? Oh, it's complete trash. Okay. <laughs> Just because you said Cyberpunk was one of your top three. And I, I played it recently, and the the driving is so bad. I mean, it's top three in the sense that it was of the three games that I played in 2023. Yeah. But I, I am same thing with Baldur's Gate. I got partway through it and then never finished. So I didn't get a chance to do a lot of driving, but it was all trash. You I, drive in Baldur's Gate? No, in Cyberpunk. Oh. <laughs> it's just like just like Baldur's Gate. The yeah. driving is trash. <laughs> <laughs> the carts are just garbage. Can't even drift with these horses. Uh, on a very related note, I recently got uh, my wife and I both bought um, e bikes, and that's a lot of fun. You're I, finally able to get the, the, the re rebate. Yeah, the Denver rebate. Um, and I got a uh, a cargo bike, so I've been able to do some uh, grocery shopping and like other small errands like that on the nice. on the bike instead of the car. And but now you can try the Denver Century with me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they shoot me information. They, uh, yeah. Ride the whole hundred. I'm assuming hundred miles. Hundred miles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on with your cargo bike. Yeah. <laughs> you Elec have to charge electric it in the electric cargo bike. Yeah. I think that's that's yeah. not oh, against, yeah, yeah. that's not against the rules. No. <laughs> it's not a race. Oh, I assumed it was a race. Is it? It's just a do a hundred miles. Yeah, yeah. It's funsies. Okay, then yeah, I guess they wouldn't. It's a hundred mile casual funsies. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've been uh, I've been really liking the e bike. It's, nice. You take it to work. Uh, I mean, I've been on parental leave basically since like two weeks after I got the e bike. So, oh, do you uh, get? So how much have you used already, and do you get the extended bonus? Because it starts. Yes, January. The, the Colorado law just so, passed. Oh, so you uh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I got uh, my own works leave for uh, one month, uh, parental leave specifically for one month. Then uh, the like federal government FMLA leave for another month, uh, uh, another month and a half, basically, I think. Um, and then uh, the vacations, uh, like or the, the holidays that my office is closed for the entire week of Thanksgiving, the entire week of Christmas, right, and the entire yeah, week right. of New Year's, and those don't count against <laughs> yeah. these. So jealous uh, of the ridiculous. Yes, this is Girl Scouts that, of Colorado, yeah. and yeah, uh, I basically get a third, uh, not a third, a fifth of the year off, um, almost as good as a school a teacher. Fifth. Yeah, uh, five weeks of vacation and five weeks of holiday. That's ten weeks. That's nuts. It I didn't think really wow. is. Yes. Um, They've actually rolled back that for new hires, so <laughs> yeah. don't everybody apply right now. But um, but yeah, I'm uh, I still have the policy from when I was hired. I guess it's not all contiguous, obviously. No, but, no, no, no. So yeah. it's a day here, a day there, mo right. more of the time, or two days here, or whatever. So right, it's, it's not uh, like it's not like five or ten weeks off. It's, right, it's uh, the full week of. Fourth of July, the full week of Thanksgiving, the full week of Christmas, and the full week of New Year's. So that's three full weeks in the span of like six weeks. Yeah, uh, okay. is just holiday time, and then and scattered three or four day weekends. Throughout. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, and then the Col the new Colorado Family Act uh, is going to pay, I think, two thirds of my wages for the next month, and my sick time is going to cover the rest of it. So. I'm actually going to come out of this. I'm taking another month after that of vacation time because I had a full month of vacation time wow. built up. So I'm going to go through the end of February. Um, so. I thought it'd be more than that. Even that family leave in Colorado is 12 weeks, anywhere between 90 to 70 percent of your wage. Yeah, uh, I don't know how it works if you already used federal leave, but right? Whatever. And 
And I took a month off when my daughter was born. Oh, uh, you had already taken. So. I took a month off, and now it's going to be like three and a half months here that is going to burn all the rest of the uh, FMLA and uh, and family and all the rest of it. So I wonder. Uh, I wonder how that and vacation. I, I'm not an expert, clearly, on this. First time hearing about that. Colorado had a separate thing, <laughs> but what <laughs> am I today? Yeah. yeah. One of my coworkers um, had her baby middle of December, mm -hmm. and she's taking off until like April. Mm. But she's completely remote and doesn't live in Colorado. And so I'm curious how oh. that, it, like if it's no Colorado idea. employer or Colorado, Colorado employee. Employer. I think employer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I like my company is great. We'll give whatever for that type of situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure they, I mean, it, they it, just negotiated with you her. You have what, like 15 employees, 20 employees? Oh, not even. We're, okay. well, we just laid off a couple of people a few months ago, but mm -hmm. we're down to eight or 10 now. Okay. Um, but we've never been more than 15, I don't think. But they're very good about working with people on that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And the fact that they were giving her off all the way until April, I was like, yeah, she, that's probably, she asked for it and they said yes. Right. Right. But I'm curious if or how, how the, much of the, the new Colorado by, thing got paid yeah, for. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you work for a company with tens of thousands of them? Oh, uh, we're not that big. Oh, okay. I mean, we have, I don't know, 7,000? Okay. It's not tens. Unless we get a new contract in March and then maybe it'll be tens a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's different. We're not Lockheed or anything, so. No. I think Lockheed is like the fifth business, fifth business, big biggest business, mm -hmm. most employed people in the country. I'm assuming the are federal they, government is not in, counted in that. Yes, I, that's no, like, yeah, yeah. Is that so? Where are they in Colorado? Because I know they're a huge employer for just the. Uh, metro they're slightly area. closer than my current job. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like Hyman's Ranch. No, I think he's mean like in the rankings. Where oh, oh yeah, no, in the rankings, like is Lockheed like. If they're fifth in the nation, oh, yeah. are they I like I don't know how much. second biggest employee in the state of Colorado? Yeah, I don't know. They have a whole what? bunch of different satellite states, so yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know how that works. Because I know all of those, you know, defense contractors slash space satellite, you know, um, aerospace people are huge, in, especially the Denver metro area, but Colorado in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really know. depends. I mean, I would assume that they're way more spread out. Uh, they have, I mean, you look at Air Force bases and then you assume that Lockheed has something near that. So, Yeah. How about we move on to news and Kickstarter? I forgot that we still had more stuff. I thought we were ready to wrap. I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like, this is set. I've just got one news item. Uh, pretty serious news item, I gotta say. Uh, uh oh that's, that that's ominous. Another, uh, another board game creator, someone in the board game world being canceled. Self-canceled in this case, but uh, Mile High Game Guys getting canceled is... Uh, oh, what a shame. Uh, yeah. I, I actually like those it. guys. Yeah. I feel like they kind of brought this upon themselves, though. Mm. You know, they really were asking for it. Sometimes when you when you look back at a career and the choices that people made, it's like you don't know that it's there until it happens, and you can see the signs. Mm. I mean, sometimes it's the lack of choices or the commitment to those choices. <laughs> so it depends. Well, on that topic, I'm, I'm pulling up my Twitch right now. Ooh. I am unsubscribing from Mile High Game, guys. That'll show them. Do we have a little sound effect for that? I, I don't know. I'm yeah, trying, you're, I'm trying exactly. to figure out how to do it. I, I, I you're like, I can't, I can't figure out this. I don't know, I don't know how to it's do it. It's asking me, uh, why you is know, it asking me for money? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, fig I'll figure it out. I'll okay. do it later. Uh, I got to say, uh, a long stretch of dead air would be an appropriate way oh, to... Oh, uh, let's leave it at the end. <laughs> yeah, let's do yeah, it. <laughs> just sit here for 10 minutes. Can you force like dead air? Like we can we can leave it and then like have like five minutes later, like have us talking again. Mm. That way Zach has to listen to it twice. <laughs> like he's like, uh, there's still something at the end. Maybe they just messed up and paused just it wrong. Leave, just leave it running and then leave. Mm. That's even, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> we can turn on the audio on his speakers so that way it sets up an alarm and it, it'll, it'll uh, trigger the uh, audio again. Mm -hmm. I just really want Zach to see this and then have like the line and then have the audio blips like yeah, yeah. later down the line. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I miss, really miss about our move from Slack to Discord is uh, Slackbot is dead, and we don't have a replacement for Slackbot. I'm sure uh, we I just could don't understand how there's not a Discord bot. There, there, like, there, there, there Discord are. is better yeah. for bots anyway. Yes. Yeah, we could figure it out. We're just lazy. Yeah. Uh, but the... Uh, sure, a little bit. A little <laughs> we're bit like, more we're wrapping up, so yeah. we're like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and drink the rest yeah. of this free alcohol. If you have heard any clinking in the last, uh, we're at hour and 20 minutes now. If you've heard any clinking, it has been uh, the whiskey stones in our glasses. Anyway, um, 
But yeah, I do miss the uh, the Slackbot roasting the guys over, you know, yeah. the, the dead air was my favorite time, part of the podcast. Like floor slapping or the, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. There were, uh, there were the old lot, memes. There were a lot of good old memes. God, floor slapping. Oh, man. What's your uh, favorite terrible moment from Game Guys? Ooh. It's going to take me a second to think about this. Do you have an answer? <laughs> I don't I don't think I do. I just like Oh man. I don't I really do know. love Zach's whispery voice when he has to correct, When he does the introductions. Yeah, the, yeah. Like seductive. Yeah. I mean, I always enjoy a good Adrian complain and mm-hmm. then and then wins anyway. It's enjoyable to hear about after the fact. It's yes. not necessarily oh, God, enjoyable to so be It's so frustrating to be in that game. He's so <laughs> You hear that, Adrian? <laughs> I will never play Rising Sun with you ever. <laughs> But then again, I'll never play Imperial Assault with Paul. Mm. Never mm. done. I thought it was funny. They posted like the their like top episode was the Imperial Assault review, and I was like, "You guys played Imperial Assault recently without me? Like that's egregious, <laughs> yeah, uh, offensive." But it yeah. was like their best episode was like from seven years ago or something like that. I was like, yeah. "Oh yeah, you know, we haven't played it in a while." But I, I I did start playing that recently, and it's still great. It's a very enjoyable game. It's not like a great. It's not. It's not like a top game that everyone has to get at any way, but it's. It's Descent with Star Wars, and what do you not like about that? So it's just expensive when you buy all of it, which yeah. I did, which is a mistake. I swear there's no way to unsubscribe on mobile. I'll have to figure it out at that home. could be. I mean, wow, you had this whole thing he's planned trying. out, and, yeah. and you can't I even do it. I didn't look it up. I was like, oh. They oh. can't see it. We could just say that he unsubscribed. It's fine. Oh, no, wait. No, here it is. I got it. I got it. Unsubscribe. Okay. <laughs> and now they won't ever know if you really did it or not. They'll never know. <laughs> you should have put the Prime free membership on them and then contested it that way they have, they have, <laughs> that way they have to deal with someone contesting your prime membership i mean honestly the only t- reason i ever subscribed in the first place was because of dungeon delvers i was i was subscribing to support myself <laughs> not not that i ever saw any of this money but how very masturbatory of you yeah do you get your own 25 cents back no they don't give me shit mm, true uh i mean every once in a while like i have those free twitch prime memberships so if they oh, catch prime if they yeah. catch my attention then you know I'm sure you can have it because i don't have prime though so that's, that's i mean i don't watch twitch so <laughs> <laughs> well i think that's about it for news and kickstarters shall we uh move on to emails emails who can do emails best uh you're in the email seat emails i can't ever do it like him though emails 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 at mile high shall we do a chorus Emails at milehighgameguys.com. Uh, we have three emails. One from uh, uh, Zach uh, McAnally. McAnally. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that says McAnally. Uh, Zach uh, Zach uh, asks, is it too late for the Gloomhaven giveaway? Yes, you jackass. It's about six years too late. I don't yeah, remember I think, when I they think, did that. I think you missed it. Did yeah. they actually give away a game? You remember I won the first game? And then they never gave it to you? No, they did. Were oh. you the troller? I was the hater. The hater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I first that. won that contest as the hater and uh and wanted to come on air like as myself, as Andrew, to uh to accept the award and surprise them all. Uh but they kept like dragging their feet on inviting me to be a guest. Mm. And so I was dragging my feet on like accepting, accepting as yeah. the hater. And uh and finally Adrian came up to me at a game night and was like, All right. This asshole, the hater, is uh, is not getting back to us and not like not picking up his thing and not revealing who he is. So we reran the thing, and you won the. Uh, oh, you won it <laughs> again! Oh, I, I, did, I didn't know that. That's hilarious. Out of the, like twenty oh, people. See, this that... is well. You could have learned if you ever watched this show or listened to the show. You know. <laughs> so uh, I had to reveal myself to Adrian then and there that like no, it's me. I'm the hater, uh, and he got a laugh out of that, and then That's uh, crazy invited that me. You won it twice in a row. I won it. I won it both as the hater and as myself. Well, with uh, the three listeners, you know, they get good chances. Yeah. 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 No, I think there were 20 people because they specifically rolled a D20. Yeah, but how many of them were Adrian? Well, we Seven. the world smart may, enough to make multiple accounts. Yeah. The world may never know. Uh, so anyway, to, to answer your question, Zatch McAnally, I do believe they're going to be giving away three more copies of Gloomhaven. Oh, here, in the last episode? In the last episode. That's why oh, it's wow, a 303 really? episode? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Huh. so just go ahead and tune in for that. And uh, complain loudly all over the internet when, when it doesn't When they don't, happen. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, no, I believe he said Jeffrey first. Uh, we have specific instructions. Definitely read Jeff's Joff Joffrey. Oh, okay. Email. I mean, you can you can write it down and have 
have Zach cut it out where we're discussing this. Yeah, whatever. They never cut out their own. Do you, yeah. Ex- yeah. Do you expect Zach to do any work no. editing this? H- half the time that I do listen to this show, they say, oh, we'll just cut that out later. And clearly they didn't because I, I just, just heard it. I think he just looks for like huge spikes or like huge like flats. Like he just yeah. cut out the, doesn't actually listen to it. He just visually cuts things. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, do you want to read this one? or No, I? I don't. Okay. All right. Well, Jeffrey Jackson says, deal... Dear Mile High Visitor Version, which is wrong. Wrong. Replacement radio. Obviously. Obviously. Get it right, loser. Uh, I hope this email finds you well. Apparently it doesn't, uh, because I'm already insulting you. I hope this email (laughs) finds you well. My name is Jeff, and I am reaching out to you on behalf of Mile High Game Guys, a popular board game podcast. Yeah, okay, canceled. (laughs) Never heard of them. (laughs) Dedicated to exploring the latest trends and discussing diverse aspects of the board gaming world. Diverse aspects from three white cisgender male mm. uh, dudes in their 30s. That's not fair. I'm Hispanic, so. Well, you're not part of the Mile High Game Guys. You're part of the Mile High Replacement Radio. We've got our token. Yeah, we've got (laughs) (laughs) it. I made a flan last week, so. I mean, actually made three. Just calling that out. Just calling that out. Do you have any left? No. Ouch. <laughs> I have been a fan of your podcast for some time now. I thought and... you were going to say my flan. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, read your email. Read your stupid email. Anthony, I've been a fan of your flan for, uh... anyway. Uh, I have been a fan of your podcast for some time now and truly appreciate the insightful content you consistently deliver to your audience. I believe that a collaboration between our podcasts would be a fant- could be a fantastic opportunity to engage both of our audiences and bring fresh perspectives to the table. MHVV RR, uh, thank you, has been gaining traction for its unique approach to drinking whiskey, talking about Blood Bowl, which is not talking about Blood Bowl. Yeah, we didn't do that today. And yeah, also Dungeons and Dragons. Stop. There is at yeah, least half an of, hour of Dungeons of and Dragons. <laughs> and we believe that featuring your podcast would provo- provo- provide added value to our listeners. You know, I got to say, reading emails, harder than it looks. Good job, Jeff. Here are a few questions to help us better understand your podcast and explore the potential for collaboration. Can you tell us about the origin and inspiration behind Mile High Visitor Version? Well, given that Mile High Visitor Version doesn't exist, yeah. no, fuck Never you. heard of no, it. No, the inspiration is you guys are too lazy to record one more episode. Bing, bang, bong. What has been your favorite episode or moment on the podcast so far and why? Hmm. This has been very tasty whiskey. I mean, that was... That's an answer. Yeah. Uh, Wes and I both brought good beers. So yeah. That's... yeah. If I drank beer, I would also enjoy that, but I don't. So, I mean, uh, my, my favorite uh, part of his podcast mm, 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 mm. was oh. when, when we started spo- his. They're dead. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just, just, to, just hypothetically, my favorite part of his podcast was when we spun it off and did Dungeon Delvers. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I never listened to that one, but I did like the Bloody Minute way back when. <laughs> Yeah, that was there was a long time where that was basically the only thing. Fucking hardlining bloody minutes. <laughs> Not anymore. It's dead to me. But you would play the podcast, skip to the bloody minute, yeah, and 100%. then yeah, that 100%. was hundred percent for me. That was the only uh, part why... of the podcast I would basically ever skip. That and uh, and um, uh, what's the the ridiculous game? Um, Kingdom the Death. Duck, Kingdom Death. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say the duck. I kept oh. I kept wanting to say Gloomhaven, but no, Kingdom Death. Oh yeah, Kingdom Death. For, yes. I, I've I've talked to Zach about this, but for whatever reason, they're very different games. But in my brain, they're the same thing. The duck. No, uh, Gloomhaven. <laughs> Gloomhaven and Kingdom Death. In my brain, I cannot distinguish them. I really did appreciate the timestamps because I can skip exactly to the mm, yes. and move on. Yeah, there are much more professional podcasts that still don't do that. Uh, so. I uh, one thing from their podcast, I I enjoyed their uh, their playthrough of uh, Yes No Banana. Oh, that, that was fun. oh, that's what I was thinking no. of. What yeah. did I just say? The duck. Oh, the duck. Yeah, Yes No Banana is what I'm thinking of. <laughs> okay, that game was. I terrible. was trying to remember what you were talking about, and I'm like, mm. Yes No Duck. <laughs> yes No Duck. <laughs> duck Duck Duck. That's exactly what I was thinking of. You know what and they call it in Minnesota? That. Please, Duck Duck Gray Duck. <laughs> Not joking. That's a, ge- a goose is a gray duck. Yep. What's, what's in Minnesota? It's duck, duck, gray duck. What are meese called? Fuck if I know. Oh, all right. Well, moving on. As a board game podcaster, what do you believe sets your podcast apart from others in this community? Jack shit. I mean, we did an episode today. Yeah. Ooh. That recency? sets us apart. Yeah. 
I mean, there's a lot of podcasts that didn't do an episode today. On a national, a federal holiday? No. <laughs> we also did 100% of our episodes on time. Oh, that's mm. true. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And you know what? Uh, you don't have to worry about a long gap for the next one because there ain't going to be a next one. So, yeah. You're welcome, everybody. Are there any upcoming projects, collaborations, or episodes that you are particularly excited about and would like to share with our audience? Well, considering we're not doing another one of these episodes, mm -hmm. no? I will say as a collaboration between uh, MHRR, uh, not VV, MHRR and MHGG, uh, this, uh, this very self-same Jeffrey Jackson uh, has recently donated to our podcast, that is to me, a copy of Gloomhaven. And, uh, and in exchange, I am taking him to a nice uh, steak dinner at a whiskey place. Uh, that's probably yeah. worth more than the Gloomhaven. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's a collaboration <laughs> if I ever heard one. Damn straight. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. So I am looking forward to that. I got I to gotta text him to set up a specific date and time for that. But yeah, sometime in the next couple of weeks. Nice. Yeah. I think we're going to the Bull in the Bush. Uh, oh, <laughs> actually, so. the prime rib is really good. Yeah. All right. Never been. Oh, it's oh. If you're nervous, oh gosh, you should go. It's not like it's like oh you gosh, want, you should go. But it's third like, person in our. It's a staple uh, of Denver. Like yeah. their their beer list is great. Okay. Their whiskey Brew pub. Is, Brew yeah. pub is their beers are solidly better than average, uh, and they do make some really cool things. All right. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that is the end of the questions. Unless anybody else has anyone any other answers. Uh, we would love to feature you and your podcast on an upcoming episode of Mile High Game Guys, and we believe our <laughs> listeners would greatly benefit from hearing your insights. If you are open to this collaboration, please let us know your availability for a brief virtual interview or any specific preferences you may have. I really feel like this was a B2B email, a business-to-business -business email, and yeah. not one that we should Yeah, we should have not read this. Yeah, well, <laughs> embarrassing. It's going to put it on the website, which doesn't get scheduled anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for considering this collaboration opportunity. We look forward to the possibility of working together and creating engaging content. Well, so much for that. For board game enthusiasts, best regards, Jeffrey Jackson, correspondent, Mile High Game, uh, Mile High game Guys, emails, emails at, at milehighgameguys.com. Emails. 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 And our last email was from uh, Adrian. Adriana. Adriana, okay. Uh, Richardson. Uh, hey, MHVV, these assholes keep getting our name wrong. I know, right? Hey, MH... It's like they've never listened to our show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Adrian, come down to the studio next time you have a problem with us and come talk about it. Come through that one door where you're sitting on the other side and come talk about it. Into your garage <laughs> slash podcasting studio. Uh, hey, MHRR, I'm just going edit to edit this on the fly. I hope you are well. <sighs> We're here. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time out of your, no doubt, very busy schedules to read and reply to this email. This is some strange yeah, some weird commas. commas. It's yeah. egregious. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to do some editing. Yeah, comma editing on this uh, audio format. Luckily, uh, you can't hear commas unless you say that you said comma. Well, I will now There's read so out. many that you can hear them. <laughs> no, you've got, you got to read them out. The people need to know. <laughs> the people demand answers. <laughs> I am sure you all consider yourselves to be very important podcasters, so I'll keep the, well, capitalized uh, in the first letter, not right. all caps. Camel. He's not shouting. Yeah. Dear God, man. <laughs> so I'll keep things brief. Uh, I see that my co-hosts are approaching this in a friendly and familial manner. Well, Jeff was pretty professional, like standoffish even. Yeah. Uh, but, Familial is a bit much. Yeah, yeah. Pretending that this is a quote unquote collaboration or quote unquote an attempt to bring our audiences together. I, for one, see it for what it really is a coup of he violence. He would say a coup. He would. He would. <laughs> My apologies. A coup. Uh, a chicken coop. A violent, coordinated assault on my free time, personal space, sanity, and the sanctity of my very own, of my own very successful podcast. I tried to, to include the, the capitalized capitalization in case, yeah. there. You think it escaped my notice? Who comprises MHVV? The insults, they continue. Yeah, just uh, dead naming us here, I think. <laughs> 
it did not escape our notice since I uh, we we added some commentary in the middle. So it did not escape his notice. Uh, first, we have the Trader West. That's me. West. West. You're West now. Clearly. Uh, worming his way into the inner workings of MHDD by serving as the first DM for MHDD, then playing interesting and entertaining characters on two more seasons. Not to mention guest starring in multiple left live streams on s- of so many different games over the last few years. A long con indeed. I'm surprised he noticed. <laughs> I've said that about you many times, that you're a long con. <laughs> Next, we have Anthony. Imagine phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Anthony, one of our first and biggest fans, as he has repeatedly made clear over the course of this episode. Was, was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was big on it. It was your long and well-researched email on our first theme anniversary oh, that right. helped convince me MHGD was something worth continuing to put, to putting six more years into. I'm sorry, Adrian. <laughs> Then you helped orchestrate our first ever live stream where we played Game of Thrones, a recording that went on to be our runaway most watched episode on YouTube. Both of those things completely void from my mind. I forgot that was a thing. The first email I sent them was how many times they said fuck and how many times they said (laughs) doo-doo. That's true. (laughs) Specifically timestamped per episode. And to be fair, I was also in that game of Game of Thrones. So... It's Fuck like you. 40%. But I of, brought the mat. 40% mm-hmm. of that game's popularity is in this room right now, not out there, wherever the fuck they are. And Runaway Most Watch episode on YouTube, so it has five views. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and take credit for Imperial Assault, too. Mm, so, yeah, yeah. The I best mean, episode. Yeah. I, I'm really the driving factor of their revenue here. Uh, and then to cap it all off, you brought in the worst. Person, I can't do a good Trump impersonation. If one of you, the want, worst, the no, wor- that's that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of random capitals though. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> got that the, going for him. I got I got the hand motions right, but y'all can't see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not twenty thousand views. Oh, so more than five. Are you really playing? Well, I didn't mean to you. click play, but yeah. Now we I finally it up. twenty thousand years. Am I wearing the same shirt? No, no, no. no. An hour same, and 41 bird, minutes into this episode, we finally have the intro music, so thank you for that. <laughs> the worst person in MHGG history, all caps, uh, or all capitalized, uh, a.k.a. The Hater, a.k.a. Andrew. Blah, 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 blah. That's me. Wow. Wait, what's the uh, Parks and Rec? Uh, what's the, the radio shock jock guys? Oh. Um Something in the douche. The douche, yes. The douche. That's that's yeah. uh, that's what's going on right here. Uh, anybody have a uh, toilet flushing uh, <laughs> sound effect you can do right now? Months of torment from an unknown source that caused me deep trauma and constant loss of sleep. You're worth it, Adrian. Always leaving me on my guard lest I make a mistake on air and receive the most scathing of emails taunting me with my own failure and inadequacy. We didn't do that this whole episode. No, not at all. We definitely did. (laughs) (laughs) If anything truly shows the depths of this plot, it is his presence on the air. Yes, that's right. My presence on the air. Uh, So, yay. Enjoy your rebellion, your usurping of the natural order. I suppose you've earned it. I hope it was everything you hoped and worth all the pain inflicted on me over the last seven years. We all know I'm a masochist, so personally, I loved every minute of it. Thanks for being such great friends and supporting the show in your own unique and awesome ways. This podcast has been one of the best things I've ever created. I obviously don't have kids. Well, even if you did. Ooh. Uh, and you three have each left your own mark on it over the years. I can't wait to hear what you do with the place. Cheers, Adrian Richardson, producer, Mile High game guys producers a little bit of a stretch (laughs) i mean it's a product and he signed (laughs) cheers yes i don't know why but that's a huge pet peeve of mine anytime i I get an email i always say cheers oh i hate it i guess i don't ever do it in emails but i do say as an email signature like business like in business language i'm talking to someone i'm done cheers 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 but i mean yeah. You're you're yeah. from the beer yeah. world, yeah. so how yeah, much? that, that it's makes the most sense. positive way I can. When say I when I get goodbye. emails as an architect that are like blah 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 blah, cheers whoever. I was like, what are you British? Like, come on, 
I mean, to me, it's uh, in good health. Is what I no, I, I understand that. That's fair. But I don't know. It's Back just banter, banter, banter round four. Yeah, it's yeah. just a weird pet peeve of mine. I don't begrudge anybody for actually saying cheers except Adrian. <laughs> and you begrudge Adrian about everything. So, you know. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I'm tempted to spoil things and read May's email. Uh, we've got, that it's we've already got so in. many extra emails. Yeah. Well, we could also li- uh, read all of these from what the What is this? Your 2023 wrapped for podcasting is waiting from Spotify? Oh, it's oh. trash. Junk. Imperial Salt. Imperial You're Salt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, yeah. I think that, that wraps it up, right? Uh, is there any actual emails or no? No one listens to this to write emails? Well, no. I, I think May's email to them for it's next the week one. is the only one that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm assuming Boyd is crafting another song. Uh, I didn't we'll know see. Boyd does songs. I guess I don't. You boy, you've missed it. for oh, the did he uh, do a MH, song? for the first MHCC, the first Cabin Con, or maybe the second Cabin Con. I forget. As an uh, email or at the con? Uh, yeah, as oh, as an okay. email. He like did a um, that shows how a, long like, it's been since I've listened. You know, to night before years. Christmas, night oh. before Christmas kind mm-hmm. of style. So he didn't email. he didn't send in a song. He sent oh. it. Uh, he sent lyrics. He sent lyrics. Yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah. I do oh, okay. remember that one. Yeah, 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 that's different. I thought you meant like he like performed a song, recorded it, and they played it. Here it is. Oh, no. A visit yeah, to no, no, yeah, don't read Kevin. this. <laughs> this is trash. <Yeah. laughs> no, I do remember this. Control yeah. F for Ant. Oh, uh, on that. Uh, mm. Julian or Kerchief and Anthony in his cap. Yeah, this is trash. <laughs> <laughs> Only I mentioned would, Anthony one first time. First of all, I wasn't even wearing goddamn cap. Just You're saying. You're not a hat person. And, and Julie was not wearing a kerchief. Mm, she might have been wearing a scarf. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, we're almost to the two-hour mark. Should we just go for one more banter round? What do you got? No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm, I feel like at this point, I, after those emails, I feel like I just want to shit on them just for funsies. But I, I, I think nothing. we've been doing that for almost two hours yeah, straight. Yeah, now, so most of what I said was just shitting on them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 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 Do you have any uh, games you want to play this year, though? Just last last second, like real realistic. What are we, what are we, what are we looking, looking forward to? Not, not like inspirational things, just like a real thing. Like, I, you know what? I'm going to fucking play this this Top this 10 year. games you're looking forward to playing this year. I mean, it's 2024. <laughs> top 24. Top 24 each. <laughs> um, let's see. Short term. The, the great term, thing short-term. is that listeners will never be able to hear our uh, reactions to having played these. So That's just fine. assume fine. that yeah, we definitely. have. Yeah. we did play all of them. For me, I bought the new Dune Imperium uh, mm. release. Uh, I would very much like to play that. I think that's my my main drive for playing things, except for the fact that I'm going to make Julie play Lord, uh, War of the Rings three times. So, we'll see. Um, only thing that I can think of right this second is War of the Rings, because you just said Fuck it. Fuck yeah, I, let's play. I, I do want to give that a yeah, shot. Yeah, let's, let's go. It. Let's is it, it. It's let's only two-player, though, right? Yes. Okay. It's only two-player. Okay. It doesn't It doesn't have a three- and four-player variance. It's like, only okay. two-player. Well, so I know in Rebellion you can play... It's only... Yeah. Two player. Cool, cool, cool. Let's give it a shot. Two player. Uh, I, you guys have always, and on the podcast, they've always talked about Jime so much that I've yeah, like, that's that's Lord know, of the Rings. I'd be Lord, interested Lord of the Rings in that, that season. Sense. Generally, yeah. co op, like, you know, not quite D&D, but let's, you know, get a group of people together to fuck some shit up. Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, <laughs> you are welcome to cut things off if you want to cut no, things off. No, I was just saying, like, that's, I, I, I honestly don't remember how they close this out. Well, yeah, we that. don't need to f- imitate them. We are our own thing. Mile high replacement radio. Yeah, obviously, we have our own closeout, and it's that we just shut it off right. <laughs>